Mr. Investor, welcome back to the channel, baby. Shout out to all my cowboys stuck in the mud. Today, let's talk about the genomic age, or ARK Invest predictions, how genomics has helped in criminal cases, and where bingo is in all of this. First of all, I want to tell you guys that I'm planning to get into these two events below. One of them costs $110, the other one's going to cost me about $60. And if you're able to donate in any way to help out, just drop me a donation via the PayPal link in my description box or the Cash App. We managed to get into the Festival of Genomics, the AGBT General Meeting. So I want to be able to cover these events as well that are pretty hard to get into for the average investor and just live stream it for all of us. Also, if you'd like to help support me on this channel, click the join button up here. It's only 99 cents. You can choose any tier you like. And if you want to join our Discord community where we talk about stocks, we do DD together. Check the Patreon link down below. You can literally join any tier. I'm letting everybody in. But if you're unable to join channel memberships, just you hitting like and clicking subscribe on this video means the world to me. Thank you very much for being a part of my channel. I appreciate you guys always. Innovation and the world of genomics. Over the last few years, we have passed significant turning points in genomics, and we have the ability to access, manipulate, and understand the molecular building blocks of the human body. This new genomic age of medicine is promising for human health. Genomics can help us in the precision of diagnostics, it can help us develop personalized medicine, and even collect data to understand disease. And then we can use technology to create cures and treatments to these diseases. So our Mark Invest thinks that by 2024, genomic companies can begin to generate hundreds of billions of dollars in new revenue and trillions of dollars in new market caps as they transition over to this genomic age. So ARK Invest also believes that big pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies will benefit from data harvested by genomics. In 2019 alone, drug development companies spent $100 billion on research and development. So if you are able to access this market and help improve research, make it easier, faster and cost efficient, then you have access to this large market. So next, Let's look at our estimates. So we're looking at about $2.6 billion to $3.8 billion annually. And in a genomics field that could reach trillions, this estimate doesn't seem far off. But when do you think this will happen? The truth is, I can't be sure or certain, but this could also be just the beginning. With the development of our nano nozzle. And no, it is not a she we. This is effectively a device that could actually turn us into a sequencer. We could get access to the long read sequencing market. This estimate the ARC put is $5 billion in market size. And another interesting interesting event that popped up, thank you to T, is this. A woman after 20 years in jail may be cleared of murdering her kids. Genomics has actually identified two of her babies died from a genetic mutation. Now they are testing samples from the other two. So some new evidence has just come out and this is using genomics. Basically, genomic testing was showing and managed to identify that two of the Australians' babies likely died from a previously undiscovered genetic mutation that led to heart complications. This means that she may have been wrongfully imprisoned for almost two decades. So there's this phenomenon that is called sudden infant death syndrome. And scientists are still today trying to identify what causes this. It's an umbrella term for when children suddenly die from unexplained causes. So the saddest thing is there was actually no conclusive evidence of her actually murdering her kids. Essentially, she has been in jail for two decades based off the prosecution using a doctor's presumptions. This was a British pediatrician. His name is Roy Meadow. And basically he stated this. One sudden infant death is a tragedy. Two is a suspicious and free is murder until proven otherwise. The prosecution then compared the chance of the children dying of natural causes to pigs flying. So genomics not only has the power to prove this woman's innocence here, but also these parents. There's been numerous cases in the UK here where babies have been removed from their parents over abuse, but it was actually found due to a geneticist that they have rare bruising conditions. This bruising condition is known as EDS aka vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. It's characterized by thin and translucent skin, easy bruising and arterial intestinal intestinal and or uterine fragility. And also here you can see BBC news sites, they've blocked my face again, but another group of parents have also been accused of child abuse over bruising. This time the case was only dropped after the mother had her son examined by a geneticist who diagnosed him with hypermobility syndrome, a condition that causes people to bruise easily. So now genomics has cleared this woman of murder for two of the babies. We're going to see if the other two come through. So we'll be watching this case closely and see how this plays out. But also genomics has helped other parents explain the unexplainable. 
And now this actually opens a corridor into genomics and understanding genetic predispositions to suicides and murders. If we can use genomics on the deceased to identify whether or not they had structural variations for health, will we be exploring and is there a gene for criminality? This goes back to nature versus nurture. Are criminals born or are criminals made? Within criminology, this is a classic argument that is made. An assistant professor in the School of Criminology, Jill Portnoy, she says, both. So whilst they found that there are genes related to increased aggression, impulsivity and risky behaviour, if they did actually manage to identify a criminal gene, what would this mean for individuals? And what would be the purpose for finding this out? Would you then treat these people? Would you implement interventions? Or even just knowing and having a diagnosis, would that turn into a self-fulfilling prophecy? Throw that into the mix of multifactorial elements of criminality like socio-economic status, like poor educational opportunities, geographic location, how would you solve this? Does this mean you will give them a house and a nice piece of land to stop them from offending? Will you create jobs? Ultimately, what's the purpose of finding this information out? Will we then explore structural variations and biomarkers that are common for serial killers in a bid to prevent murders from happening? Some researchers suggested that they have found genes in men and in other successive generations and they all exhibited problem behavior including impulsiveness, aggression, arson and rape. This is connected to one particular gene. This is dangerous territory to explore especially if we explore race and gender as well. What do you think will happen? Hit me up in the comments, let me know. So King's College at the moment is currently looking at loads of different mental health disorders and diseases. So if we can actually find a predisposition to suicide that makes us more susceptible to committing suicide, then this could actually save a lot of lives. Not to mention help us put in interventive measures that are actually going to make people's lives better so they can cope with life. Anyways, back to BNGO, we focus on rare disease and cancer as of this moment, but the genomic space is huge and everything from diagnostics to discovery to genetic editing will help us move forward. Forwards. So in terms of rare disease, if we look at rare disease collectively, we can see rare disease in itself is actually quite common. One in 17 people will be affected by rare disease at some point of their life. This can be 3.5 million people in the UK, 30 million people in Europe. And according to the World Health Organization, there's over 400 million people with rare disease worldwide, as we can see here. So we can help in diagnosis, we can help in data collection and get reoccurring revenue for years to come. So I want to know what you guys think. So hit me up in the comments and tell me your thoughts and feelings about this and where you think bingo is going to be going in years to come. It literally only takes one acquisition or one patent to give us access to the long read sequencing market or even the short read sequencing market too. And if you guys are able to help me get into these events below and able to donate, I appreciate you guys so much. It really helps me out and I can just share it between all of us. But if you guys are unable to donate or join channel memberships, just you hitting like and clicking subscribe on this video means the world to me. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Mr. Investalot, over and out, baby.